In today's video, we are rehousing Avicularia juruensis, formerly known as the Peru purple. And this one I picked up from Ellie's Bug Babies a little while ago and temporarily housed it inside this enclosure. So what we're going to do, what we are going to do, is take the bits out that we can. Now this has molted a couple of times since picking it up from Ellie. It is behind this piece of cork bark here. Now this is often confused with Avicularia purpurea but I can tell you now that this this species gets slightly larger than the purpurea and it's a little bit more flighty, a little bit more bolty than the purpurea they can be quite chilled out and calm but if you remember when I placed this one in here this ended up being a handling video which I'm not a huge huge fan of and this webbing is really really strong I'm struggling to tear it in order to get this stuff out there she is she or he I'm not quite sure of the sex of this one yet I haven't managed to get a full intact malt out of it yet I'm hoping it's female because it is such a beautiful species the adult size these get between 13 to 15 centimeter diagonal leg span lifespan wise females live 10 to 12 years and males live 3 to 4 years so it would be nice to have a female just to have that longer lifespan and have it in the collection for a lot longer now I'm going to try get this one out into my catch tube just so I can give you guys a much much better look at it come on they tend to be a very well behaved species which makes them ideal for beginners back up into the catch tube see the lovely purple colorations on this one so there she is or he inside the catch tube absolutely beautiful spider you can just make out the colors on those legs unfortunately it looks like at some point during a molt she has lost this front leg and grown it back it's not as thick and fluffy as this one here so hopefully with the next molt she will be looking a lot better you can see it there it's a lot skinnier at the front there still beautiful now daytime temperatures I like to keep everything in my collection at 24 degrees during the day and then I drop it down at around 18 degrees at night and they do just fine for slings and juveniles it is important that these do get cross ventilation in their enclosure because the build up of humidity can be an absolute death trap for avicularia species but as adults I found that they do just fine in enclosures like exoterras just perfectly fine with just a water dish 
I mean, you can mist it every now and then just to raise the humidity a little bit, but on the whole, it's not really important. So here's the enclosure that this girl or boy is going into. I do think it's a female. Just looking at it, I do think it's a female. But she's going in here. It is just an 8x8x12. This is a spider shop enclosure. The glass ones with the sliding glass front lid. Just a standard arboreal setup. She's got the cork bark tube, some fake plants in here, and a water dish. It's all you need to give arboreal species as a basic setup. I mean, you can add stuff like moss, leaves, and sticks and whatever for them to climb over. But from what I found with Avicularia species, is in an enclosure this size, she's just going to go into that cork bark tube set up shop in there, make a home in there and be quite comfortable. Now, I have found that if you give Avicularia species larger enclosures, like the 30 by 30 by 45, the Exoterra Tall, I believe it's called, um, you do see them out and about exploring a lot more. So maybe at some point, this girl or boy will be rehoused into one of those. But now we're going to get her out of there into the new enclosure and hopefully you'll be able to see those purples and blues a lot better. Right, so here we go. We are going to place her into the new enclosure. Now I'm hoping to put her here on the cork bark and hopefully she'll just sit out and let us get a nice look at her. Now a little side note that I forgot to mention is that these are a new world species of tarantula. So they do have urticating hairs, which if you don't know what urticating hairs are, they are on the abdomen of the tarantula. And whenever they feel threatened or scared, they do flick those hairs and they are irritating if they get on your skin. There she is inside the new enclosure as you can see those beautiful blues and purples on the carapace and there's that bum leg that I was talking about. And it's been a really easy rehouse at Vicularia's can be quite bolty, they can be quite flighty, but they can also be very, very, very sociable. And they are known for liking a little wander around the enclosure. But on the whole, this one's actually been pleasant and a joy to rehouse. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully this inspires you to pick up an avicularia. And especially, the Juruensis or the Peru purple as it's often known as. So I'm going to leave it there to get settled in. So there you have it, a smooth rehousing as always. If you just take your time with any species which is quite bolty and quite flighty, that's the secret. Just keep calm you'll have a smooth rehouse. Now the Avicularia durarensis is an absolute stunner. I do plan on picking up a purpurea at some point because I do love the purple spiders. Already got the Formictopus species Dominican purple, the durarensis that you just saw. There's a few others in the collection. They're just awesome. So hopefully this video will help you out with keeping this species in your collection and also will give you an insight on better rehousing. So now all that's been said, I'm going to end the video here. So have a great day, have a great week, take care and I'll see you in the next one. If you can't wait till then, there's one here to tide you over till then. See you later.